Good morning again. Um, welcome to session two of today's revalidation seminar. I'm Stephen Tobin. I'm a surgeon in Ballarat, Victoria, and also Dean of Education for the College of Surgeons. Um, what we heard about in session one, which I, I hope you all think went really well, was to just set the scene. And the aim of session two is now to find out about what actually can be done by colleges and practices and institutions um, and what's actually happening in the doctor's practice. And then Dr Lockyer will follow up towards the end of the session and tell us really comprehensively about what's happening in Alberta. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome Professor David Waters. David. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present what the Royal Australasian College of Surgeons is doing with regards to performance assessment. What I'm going to do is to uh, explain uh, something about our guide on performance assessment, how we've added a multi-source feedback tool to it, how we've introduced performance assessment into our CPD program, and then our latest development of the electronic multi-source feedback tool going from paper-based to electronic. As has already been said, competence is about what we've been trained to do and performance is about what we actually do in practice. And our competency framework is based on uh, all the leading work done by CanMeds and, and the, the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada and we're looking forward very much to your next iteration in 2015. But what we did in the RACS was to add two extra competencies which we thought were particularly relevant to surgeons, technical expertise, and clinical decision-making and judgment. And therefore, we have nine competencies uh, as shown here. Each of our nine competencies we've subdivided with three patterns of behavior or described it with three patterns of behavior. And for example, this is for the competency of scholarship and teaching, showing commitment to lifelong learning, teaching supervision and assessment, and striving for surgical excellence. And the, uh, each of the patterns of behavior are then described by examples of poor behaviors and good behaviors. And so this is the example of uh, judgment and decision making. And uh, for example, not considering or discussing alternative options, uh, not soliciting the views of other team members, failing to adequately discuss and ensure documentation and options, unwilling to alter decision making. These are all the things that are done by, uh, and we don't like it when it happens and it leads to disaster or the examples of good behavior, recognizing, articulating the problems to be addressed, initiating a balanced discussion of options, seeking second opinions when appropriate, respecting the patient's right for self-determination. That's good practice. And we've asked people to be assessed uh, by using a rating scale, which doesn't and deliberately doesn't use numbers. So poor, marginal, good or excellent, and for other raters, then they may be unable to rate. But we did not want to describe surgical performance in terms of, I got an average of 4.3 or this year and 4.2 next year or something like that. And we would freely uh, acknowledge that our patterns of behavior and our good and bad behaviors and, and, and uh, behavioral markers are based on the NOT system uh, that's based on four domains of assessment that deals with non-technical skills and the work of George Youngson and Rona Flynn in Aberdeen and Edinburgh. Our continuing professional development uh, program has four categories. Uh, they went down to four categories and for 2013. The first is surgical audit and peer review. Uh, both of those, uh, surgical audit and the audit of surgical mortality, are mandatory, uh, and we'll be hearing from Barry Bayliss later on about uh, the audit of surgical mortality. Clinical governance is the in involvement in improving care, and uh, people have to do, get, get 10 points for that. And then in 2013, we introduced a new category of performance review, uh, and the fourth category is one that I think is pretty common to all colleges, which are maintenance of knowledge and skills. If we take our category three uh, performance review, 
and you have to get 60 points for categories three and four combined, and ca category three is not at the moment mandatory. Uh, three and four are combined to get your 60 points, but we very generously award points for multi-source feedback. 30 points, and those 30 points will be valid for the next, uh, the two subsequent years as well. If you do a learning plan, you get 10 points, uh, 15 points for a patient feedback survey, practice visits, which again we'll be hearing about later on, uh, recipients and visitor points there, and peer review of three medical, legal, or other case reports, 15 points. So we're really trying to encourage surgeons, without yet mandating it, to be actually engage in performance assessment and performance review. And this, of course, deals with the top part of Miller's Triangle uh, and is based very much in how do we actually perform in the workplace. I'd like to share with you now what we've done <clears throat> in taking our multi-source uh, feedback tool and trying to make it electronic, because that's the 2014 uh, task. Uh, what we are wanting to get is a simple, user-friendly, and intuitive data entry that works just as easily as if you were doing it on paper. It's actually in the background based on the ubiquitous uh, standards, uh, and that the reports are in a feedback uh, information that in a format that the users actually want and are visually understandable and quite clear and that the various complex workflows can be tailored to the needs of the users and the organization. We're actually using a program called K2 to do that, but I don't think it's, uh, it's a very good program, but obviously there are competitors out there. The, uh, the multi-source feedback tool, uh, just like the guide, uh, encourages rating using poor, marginal, good, and excellent across the uh, 27 patterns of behavior, three for each of the nine competencies, and enables the rater uh, to read the examples of poor and good behavior, and then to uh, put down uh, what they think in answer to that question, how would you rate your performance at consistently demonstrating the highest standards of medical knowledge, surgical skill, and professional behavior, poor, marginal, good, or excellent? And one might rate one's own performance as good. Uh, and obviously, if you're doing a self-assessment, you're going to be able to rate all 27 patterns of behavior. And the, the top guide uh, here along the top actually shows you where you're progressing through the, the, the tool. Uh, there is an opportunity to write comments. And uh, if you have a learning issue, uh, that you'd like to record, uh, you can do that. And again, raters can also put their, their comments in. Having done your own self-assessment, the, then the opportunity to, to choose uh, raters and then a reviewer to actually collect the information from the, the raters and actually feed that back to the participant. So uh, you can choose a, a colleague, uh, another registered health practitioner, or other professional colleagues, and uh, the list uh, is down below the blue line, and you can see that uh, we're starting to, to choose people. They get sent an email, asked if they would uh, take place, then they enter the, uh, enter the, 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 the tool and uh, say that they're a rater, and proceed uh, through the, uh, the same multi-source feedback uh, through the patterns of behavior. Once the raters completed their work, there's a nice smiley figure appears in red uh, down below the blue line uh, to let you know that they've actually done what they've been asked to. And there will be some uh, patterns of behavior that it's not possible to actually rate uh, because, for example, not all surgeons see other surgeons operate, so they may decline to actually rate on a particular thing like uh, to do with technical expertise. The same would be true if we had a patient version of this. It would be hard for the patient necessarily to rate the technical behavior. And the rater can obviously is, is, is asked and prompted to put in a comment if they put poor or marginal uh, to help with the feedback. At the end, uh, individual raters and your own self-assessment can get a, a PDF printout of uh, what, uh, what uh, rating you got for each of the patterns of behavior, and then this can also be graphically portrayed 
uh, to show where the, the, the balance of the rating is uh, and one can click on the to view various comments that have been fed, uh, fed back. And the reviewer who's actually collating all the raters' uh, ratings can, can also put their own comments and recommendations into the system. So in, in summary, uh, where we've come over a decade, in 2003 we established a competency framework, in 2008 we got a guide uh, with a framework of performance assessment to which we added a multi-source feedback tool in the second edition in 2011. We then introduced this into the CPD program in 2013, still on a voluntary basis, and uh, we've providing an electronic multi-source feedback uh, tool, uh, or one can still use the paper one in 2014. Thank you very much.